Hey guys, how's it going? It's Julian, live from the Rayong Beach in Thailand. As I mentioned, I'm taking my kids on a road trip and this was like the stop for today. Um, I've already worked out where we're going tomorrow, but it's kind of played by a few and I, I, I love the fact that I can kind of like, uh, you know, live, live life on a whim, uh, on, pretty much on a whim. And, you know, as, as long as the kids are free, we can pretty much uproot and go wherever we want. So, uh, today's topic uh, is going to be about overtrading. Okay, the fact that I, I, I mean, the, the, I, I picked this location for this video for a very specific reason because uh, the, 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 matter, the fact of the matter is that too many people don't go out enough. So, a lot of people actually started to trade binary options because they wanted to have more free time, right? And then they wanted to make more money in less time. But the unfortunate truth is that there's a lot of people after coming to know how powerful binary options is, end up cooping themselves up in their room or in their study and you know just doing trades at any available moment. And, and I see some people, not my students, and I'm, but I'm sure some of my students are like this as well. Um, I saw a guy go up an elevator uh, just yesterday in, in the same building I was, I, was, I was staying at and he was taking up, it's like, Lo and behold, it, what he was doing, mobile binary options trading. He was looking at his charts like, uh, then I was like, I felt like telling this guy something. I was like, are you crazy? What, what's your problem? The signal can get lost any moment, but you're, you're trading. What the heck's up with that? You know, <laughs> chill. So it doesn't mean that just because it's easy to profit in the binary, Wait, I'm making a video. You want to say hi? No. <laughs> so, um, but just, not just because it's easy and convenient, it's profitable, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that you have to do it all the time, right? So, uh, learn to take the time alone that you have a little, set aside special time. And what I've been doing lately that's been getting me really good results in my webinars is that I've been setting a goal of being able to, uh, of, of just making like, uh, depending on how close we, I mean, how the market is and how close we are to the lunch time. Let's say if you're really close to the market, like lunch hour, uh, then I'll, I might just wanna like yesterday. I I, I got the the webinar time totally mistaken. I didn't realize that you know the the New York time shifted from GMT minus five to minus four, and and so I was an hour late for the webinar, and then um, I realized it was already like 11:15, right? It's very close to US lunch time. I was like shit. Okay, let's get three net wins and we'll be out of here. So lo and behold, by 15 minutes we're already at four net wins. And uh, I said, you know, heck, we can stop here. Because, I mean, it's like 11.30, so it's, it's, not, it's not a bad time to stop, right? And then, as usual, students would be like, um, you know, let's, let's pick another trade. Hey, one more trade. We just came on, we were late, we missed the first bid. Let's come on. Uh, but I mean, hey, I mean, it's, it's BS because no doubt I thought the webinar was, a lot of people thought the webinar was cancelled, but even though we had a late start, we set 228 people on the webinar. And, um, so with the late start, we have uh, a lot of people came on, and by the time that started, we already were like I know that at least 170 of the 228 people caught the you know caught the first couple of trades, and so anyway we went on the the fifth trade was a loss, and then the sixth trade was uh, yeah. oh wait a second yeah the sixth trade was a win so. The sixth trade and the fifth trade were, were essentially a waste of time because uh, I mean we already got the first we already got the first four trades in 15 minutes uh, four net wins and then the next 10 minutes was spent like uh, you know making a loss and recovering from the loss and then after that uh, we entered the market again uh, for a seventh trade and this resulted did you get this right seven yeah seventh trade. And that made it to uh, hang on, wait, wait a second, five one six one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven trade, and that was a that was a win. So the annual, the final result was like a five net wins, six win, one loss. So um, was the time worth it? I mean, it took half an hour for the the extra the extra one net trade. Um, well, it depends. I mean, it depends on you, okay? And a lot of people when they make a loss. They also have this habit that, like, uh, they're thinking, you know, I was about to show my screen, sh my my screenshot. I was about to show my login of my trades to my friends, or or spouse, or kids, or whoever you want to impress in your house, right? And then, and then suddenly you you thought, hey, you know, let's just make it a little bit better, and so that, you know, if you, if, if you, would you agree with me that if you had, 
one extra win on your page will look that they'll make your results page look that much more awesome than you know a couple already. So, um, and then suddenly you came in from the page of greens, came a red. I need water, but I don't have any water. Okay, give give me like five minutes. I'll give you some water. Will be okay? You wanna say hi on the camera? Hi. <laughs> okay. So, so um, where was I? Yeah, so I said like about about chase about chasing the trades, right? Well, um, I was talking about let's say if you make a loss. Well, sometimes depending on scenarios, uh, of course I use technical indicators like Fibonacci to see if a trade is worth pursuing. But if a trade is not worth pursuing, I, I I don't do it. I feel that it's much better to win one and make up for the one that I lost, and then you know free my mind and reset myself and go to something else. But a lot of people when they when they give away something to the markets, they just feel they're very upset in themselves, they feel that uh, they feel very challenged uh, and uh, there even is the sense of revenge which you should never ever revenge trade but a lot of people do and in fact I used to do that um, the, the, the way that I was able to get around this problem of uh, revenge trading and over trading was to set myself a limit so if I set myself uh, a, a, a goal of four winning, tr uh, four net trades or five net trades, and if I can achieve that in a certain amount of time, you know, it, it frees me up for the rest of the hour, rest of the day, and I can do a lot, a lot more stuff. Um, so I, I, I highly encourage you to have like free time. I encourage you to have like uh, hobbies and stuff that you might want to engage in. Uh, if it could be, uh, you know, if it could be video games or or like uh, something outdoors, you know, uh, like sport or something, hitting the gym, you know. Uh, boxing class, something that would take you away from trading and, and you know that you would feel that you would that you would de develop in you some kind of a fear of loss of the time of being able to do something else versus trading okay uh, I mean trading is great and all is it's really profitable but at the same time you know uh, as with all good things you know um, if you ate fast food all day uh, every meal you're gonna get your intestines clogged up, so, and uh, you're gonna get, you know, heart disease and stuff, obesity. So, for the very same reasons, when you're trading, you want to be able to, you want to be able to free yourself. You want to be able to, um, you want to be able to kind of like, uh, you know. Sorry, I'm just distracted playing with sand, right? <laughs> so you want to be able to free yourself and, and uh, too much of a good thing is not going to be good for you. So too much of trading, like over trading. Too much trading is a bad thing. Um, and uh, it can, it, it's, it can, you, you're going to think you're on downfall. And let me just give you an example, all right? It's been just two weeks starting on a new account where I've been building on a, a 1,000 to 10,000 challenge. I'm doing this again. And this time around, I'm actually uh, getting like, you know, I've built my account up 50% in just two weeks, okay? A little bit more than 50%, around about 54% to be exact in two weeks. Uh, very, very humbly, and I, I'm not even compounding at the moment. So, I think within within a month uh, we would. I mean, with compounding, obviously, I get to a hundred percent, a double account a lot quicker. But um, I mean, fifty-four percent in two weeks is not bad as well. Okay, so more importantly, um, I've been able to show a lot of my students the way to train in a very disciplined way, uh, as opposed to as opposed to trading on a on a binge. Okay. A lot of people have this have this uh, fear that you know th they fear the trade they fear losing the trade no, they fear losing out the trades basically they fear on uh, they always have this fear of loss so what I what I suggest for you like I mentioned it's better for you to develop a fear of loss of something else in the place of trading remember why you you. Like okay, I mean seriously, if you if you have if your hobby is trading and you're you're trading so that you can trade more, I mean good luck to you. you you're just gonna fuck yourself up really bad. Uh, take it from me, I, I wouldn't even recommend that. But um, 
you, you should have tr the goal to be trading for something way bigger than, than that, okay? And uh, screwing up in, in your trading by over trading is going to be at the expense of something else. So I would like you to learn to appreciate that. And this is basically my lesson for today. And I hope this finds you well. If this made sense to you, I know it's a little bit draggy, but I hope you enjoy the scenery. And uh, I have to get to my kids in a while. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.